Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna, and today we'll be doing April releases for 2024. Let's get going. So my first book is Kill Her Twice by T. Stacey Lee, Los Angeles, 1932. Lulu Wong, star of the silver screen in the pride of Chinatown, has a face known to practically anyone, especially, especially to the child sisters, May, Gemma, and Priyani. Luna's former classmates and neighbors, so the girls instantly knew it's Luna's, whose body they discover one morning in out of the way, in out of the way stable far from Beverly Hills Mansion where she moved once her fame skyrocketed. My next book is Dark Up by Four by Jun C. L. Penn. A vengeful girl, a holo boy, a missing god. Lou has one goal in mind, holding her magic to avenge her mother's death. Yunnan is a black sheep in a an illustrious family, the world will be at his feet, had he born, been born with magic. And Nikia is a reaper, serving the fourth king of hell when his master disappears, the underworld begins to crumble, and the human world will be next if the king is not found. When an accident causes Mu's power to transport to Yunnan, everything turns upside down. Without her magic, Mu has no tool for vengeance. With it, Yunnan finally feels like he belongs. That is until Lou discovers she might hold the key to the missing death god and strikes a dangerous bargain with another king. That sounds so good. My next one is A Letter to Luminous Deep by Sylvie Cathwell. A beautiful discovery outside the window of her underwater home prompts the elusive E to begin a correspondence with the renowned scholarly Henry Cleo. The letters they share are filled with passion, at first for the mutual interest and then immediately for each other. Together they uncover a mystery from the unknown depths. Destined to transform the water world, they both equally fear and love, but by no mere coincidence I see Craig destroys East home, and she and Henry vanish. My next one is to gaze upon wicked gods by Mother Action. She has power over death, he has power over her. When two enemies strike a dangerous bargain, will they end the world or ignite one? He must die, cowards live. Daughter of a conquered world, Mewing hates the invaders who descended from the heavens long before she was born and defeated the magic of her people with technologies unlike anything her world had ever seen. Blessed by death, born with the ability to pull the life right out of mortal bodies, Mewing shouldn't have to fear these foreign invaders, but she does, especially because she wants to keep herself and her family safe. When Mewing gives is discovered by an enemy prince, he offers her an impossible deal if she becomes his private assassin and eliminates his political rivals, who says he swear would be for the good for both of the worlds and would protect her people from further brutalization. Her family will never stop for harm again, but to accept this bargain, she must use the powers she has always feared, powers that will shame years off her own existence. So my next book is actually a sequel to Strike the Zyper, I believe. It is Sound of Gong by John, by John He. All her life, Zephyr has tried to rise above her humble origins as a no-name orphan. Now she is a god, in a warrior's body, and never has she felt more powerless. Her lord, the Jin Men, holds the Westlands, but her position is tenuous. In the north, the Empress remains on the mere Samuel's thumb. In the south, the alliance with Sakata is in pieces. Fate also seems to have different wonder in mind for the three kingdoms, but Zephyr has no intentions of respecting it. She will pay any price to see men succeed, and she will make her enemies pay, especially one dark-haired, dark-eyed crow. What she will do when she finds out the truth? That he walked for the south all along. Only the heavens know. I might actually have to reread the first one. I kind of remember what was happening, but... I might have to reread the first one. <laughs> this one is Song of the Six Worlds by Judy Island. It is, I believe, also the first book. I think it's the first book of something. But Zoo, a talented young musician, has no past and probably no future. Often at a young age, her kindly poet uncle took her in and arranged for an apprenticeship at one of the most esteemed entertainment houses in the kingdom. She doesn't remember much from before entering the House of Flowing Water. In which her uncle is suddenly killed in a banner attack, she is devastated to lose her last connection to her life outside of her in indentual contract. With no family and no patron, Zhu is facing the possibility of a lifetime of servitude playing a queen for nobles and that plays her talent with one breath and sneer at her and lowly social status with the next. Then one night, she is unexpectedly called to the men's 
to a call to the garden to pull on a private performance for an enigmatic Dink Meng. The young man is strange and kind and awkward for nobility and surprises Zhu further with an irresistible offer. Serve as a musician in the residence and his manor for one year, and he will set her free for her indenture. But the new motives become increasingly more suspect when he and the Zoo barely survive an attack by a nightmarish monster, and when he whisks her away to his estate, she discovers he's not just some country noble, he's the Duke of Dreams, one of the divine rulers of the celestial realm. There she learns the six robes are on the brink of disaster, an excursion by demonic beasts are growing more frequent. The Duke needs new help to unlock memories from her past that could hold the answers to how to stop the impending war. But first, Zhu will need to survive being the target of every monster and deity in the six worlds. So my next one is, this is actually number three in the Twin Crowns trilogy. It's, and it is called Burning Crowns by Catherine Doyle. Twin queens rose and went, survived the battle of Anadorn, and brought back magic to the kingdom, but the angel lurks in Yana's shadows. Wen is in trouble. Ever since she performed a blood spell on Prince Enzo, her magic has become unruly. Worse, the spell created a link between Wen and the bloody man she is trying to forget, Icy King, Icy King Alaric of Shimera. A curse is eating away at both of them. To fix it, they must journey to the northern mountains, under the watchful guard of Captain Torn Iverson, to consult with the healer on high. Right. So this is also the number three in the Bones of Ruins, and this is the Lady of Rapture by Sarah Rowley. For years, the Elite Secret Society called the Enlightenment Committee has waited for the ap apocalyptic force known as Hiva to destroy the world as it has so many times before. What the committee didn't know, however, was that Hema was an element, it was a person. Iris Marlow, an African type rock dancer with no memories of her past, a girl who cannot die. At least she couldn't die, not un until her own friends discovered her one weakness and murdered her once and for all. Wow, that's harsh. <laughs> the world ending thread she pulls should be gone too, but there's one more Hema out there, and unlike Iris, this one has no love for humanity. In her absence, this Hema has taken upon himself to judge if humanity deserves to live. Oh, imagine if that was in the real world. I don't think all the humanity will live, in all honesty. And my last one, this is also number three in, in every generation. It is called Against the Darkness by Kendra Boy. The four generations, the slave was supposed to be the chosen. The one girl in all the world with the power to stand against vampires, demons, and forces of darkness. When Willow used the Seath to call upon all the potential slayers at once and changed everything. For years. For years, the slayers have been working and fighting together as a team. Then the darkness came, killing many slayers and trapping the best in an alternate dimension. And Frankie Rosenberg, the world's first slayer witch, found herself fighting evil alone. Sort of. Sure, she has a new Scooby gang, plus the help of her mom, Lola Watcher Spike, and even a brooding hot hunter of Timers. Do they have to use that? Like, so, it's so annoying. But even though they have a master plan, obviously, the gang is more fragmented than ever. So maybe it really is up to Frankie, and Frankie alone, to stand against the darkness. When Jake's wild werewolf brother back in town, Dark World is threatening to return, and the darkness preparing for the final stage of the attack, now is not a great time to wallow in teen angst. After all, she's the slayer. It's time to slay. That was... <laughs> that was kind of cheesy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but okay, so those are the books that are coming in April. Let me know what you're gonna read in April, and please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!